Well, my name is Adam Murray. I'm the guy that came up with the idea to fly around the Sierras and also the guy that talked all my friends into doing it. Where was I? Hey, shoe, shoe doggy, <laughs> shoe fly. All right, stop having fun. I'm French. I'm very handsome. Oh yes, I'm very fit. Some abs, strong legs. I guess the idea for the trip just came from the idea of doing cross country. And I did like a smaller one that was like 300 miles, all unsupported and soloed. And from that, the idea of doing a much bigger one and doing it with friends and a van and all that kind of stuff kind of slowly but surely developed from that. The trip started on one day, but the true adventure of the trip started like two weeks before that. Art had a ton of stuff on his plate, like besides his personal business, he took on the duties of making the shirts and printing stickers and doing logos and doing all this stuff for the trip, which in the end, not one person or two people could have ever done in the amount of time he needed, so. We're just words, just, just words. Okay, so after that, I think we'll be able to piece this yeah. all together for sure. Yeah. And then we got to get on that radio and the band and stuff. Like the shirts are going to have to be good. But yeah, on our end, just about an hour away, you know, we were just trying to get shit together and uh, that motor up to par. We were backing up at Mitch's house and, you know, doing the normal heckling we do to each other and giving Art crap about his extra long straps. Now he's always got to buy the long stuff and the big stuff. And he just ripped it out of the thing at the end of the strap and smashed his elbow against the door of the van and broke a couple bones off in his elbow. That was like eight hours before we were gonna launch into this adventure, so. Me and Art had spent a lot of time around each other in a stressful environment, not a lot of relaxation, so. Coming up to that night, it was super stressful, especially amongst us. You know, we just, our humor doesn't cl or doesn't quite mesh all the time with each other. Oh, the black duct tape you take the horse head in my roof with? Yeah. You know where that's at? Uh-huh. What if Melissa shipped it to us, like you got here and she forwarded it? It's not even that important. It's not important. It just help. So the morning of the first day, I woke up feeling pretty good. Um, honestly, as soon as I got in my truck and started heading towards Mitch's, like the anxiety kind of started and uh, feeling the, the weight and the pressure of all the different logistics of that morning. Got to the airport, got out in the cold air and instantly started getting nervous again because it was cold. It was like, I don't even really remember exactly what it was, but it was definitely somewhere around 20. What's, what's the temp gauge say? 10? Oh, guys, it's 28. Oh, sick. So once we made it on the tarmac, of course, Art couldn't fly, and that was a pretty heavy emotional moment. when it like really dawned on him and dawned on us that he wasn't gonna make it. Like he just wasn't going to be able to do it. It was tough, but 
At the same time, I just knew in the back of my head I also needed to kind of stay focused, not get too caught up in the moment there because what we were about to do required, you know, in the moment decision making and focus on it, nothing else. Divining, we did it. Ha <laughs> We'd accomplished it. We we're there. We we're day half, you know. First flight, first leg out of the way, we landed, we high fived and it all kind of just fell on me. It was exhausted. We decided to lay out in this little parking lot and launched right at Mono Lake, a beautiful little spot. Perfect conditions, wind coming right up slope. Ascending. And uh, Blake showed up, we topped off and sent it. And uh, you know, we we're literally, by the time Blake showed up to the time we sent it, it was probably 20 minutes max. I and mean, we literally pulled up, we grabbed gas, we filled it up, we put our gear back on, and we, we were going. Mammoth was our goal. And if you step into his world with his mind, you will see it quickly change into a beautiful, exciting world of fantasy. Came in and landed, uh, snuck in between the tree and the van, had a great landing. Put it down nice and easy in the wind, and I look over and Adam's still like 5,000 feet over the deck. I'm like, well, he's having a good time, man. This guy's just out there partying. Freaking uh, mammoth, east right. side, Owens Valley, 11 o'clock type stuff. Yeah, we drilled it. <laughs> Perfect start. Yeah. Ah, get those slugs off, my goodness. Dude, just wailing around, dude. Just... A huge thermal and spit you right out. Yeah! Oh my god! Oh, dude, I sank in hundreds of feet a minute and then all of a sudden skyrocketed. Yeah! I'd see you and it hit you and I'd be like, oh, what am I Oh doing? god, here it comes, here it comes. Yeah. <laughs> that was what morning one was like. It was everything I dreamed of and then, you know, a spicy finish to cap it off. We accomplished that day. We did more than we had set out to do. Stayed up all night, we flew 130 miles today. You know, I'm cooked, I'm, I'm ready for some downtime. Jean-Francois Genard. Jean. <laughs> Jean-Francois Genard. What a rad French dude. He's very handsome, he has great abs. He's 50 years old, readily available. And uh, yeah, he's just a hoot to be involved with on a trip like this. I came on board on the day number two in Bishop. I'm glad that we met right there because that first flying day for me over the Sierra Nevada was the most beautiful part of that trip, going over the mountain. 
we went big. We didn't like, uh, we didn't do just some little shoot around the meadow type flight. You know, it was the highest he's ever flown and some of the most exposed terrain besides being over the ocean like he's done. We went from Bishop to Lone Pine. That was about 70 miles, I assume. And the challenging part was not the flying, it was just it was cold up there, and that's pretty much it, because we were at si over 16,000 feet. I prior never flew any higher than 14.2, just to try it, when I was in Colorado, launched at 9,000 feet, it was only 5,000 feet climb. When this time we launched from 4,000, we went to 16,000 feet. So that was a 12,000 feet climb with the same setting on the car, we didn't touch it. So the engine just keep climbing and keep climbing. We just uh, could keep an eye on each other, seeing each other flying, getting close to each other from time to time. It was just cold. The build up to that flight was really great. I felt good, I felt confident. The weather looked better than perfect. It's so rare to see five mile an hour forecasted winds out of the east on top of Mount Whitney. That's like maybe once in four days out of the year. So I felt really good and we got off the ground pretty effortlessly if I remember correct. I don't remember there being any hitches. And we took off. Very beautiful. From here, it looks big. Isn't that mountain yeah. range awesome? But 16,300 so feet, that was which good. are too high for you, bud. Ten is not 16 freaking thousand feet. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep climbing and climbing and climbing. It's like okay, all right. Oh, 13 or oh, 14 or oh, 15. The air was just oh, great. Okay. All the way up through all the layers. Mm -hmm. There's no problem mm -hmm. once you got up into the mountain. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was very smooth. Some of the best mountains in Sierra. Yeah, right there. And then that Lone Pine Peak. The main one there with those big, beautiful yes. grants. Wow. Yeah, very nice. When what a spectacle. There, when you can down, when along the rock, following the rock, between the rocks, kind of. See that big slab so on the neck? I know we just started yesterday, but I already feel myself kind of falling more into the groove. Me too. Of sitting Dude, in yesterday the was rough. This, you know, after we landed, I was kind of like, holy shit, that was a big fight. I'm fucking tired. Yeah. We were right up on them, which was a really profound feeling. And, uh, whoa. Like, I was floored by that experience, even in the moment. I didn't even need to let it sink in. I was just floored. Um, when I landed, that was the first time I met Jean-Francois and Julie. So I knew Mitch, Adam, 
Adam and his crazy hair, Mitch and his cool, cool dude style. <laughs> um, but they were like pretty much rushing me like, okay, well, glad you're here, BB. Let's get your shit going. And we're gonna take off and fly. You need to mix, your, mix some gas, but let's, we're, gonna, we're gonna have a yeah. brief. Yeah, let's talk about what we're gonna do first. So we're all on the same page. The uh, restricted airspace is majority of this black zone down to here and over across here and up to here. That's a no-fly zone. I think she should just do that since we have so many bottles. Yeah, you can just run your 50. You can literally take over Arts 2 cans. Yeah. Okay. This is your stuff. Oh, that's my mix can, but that's your stuff. All right, go team, break. All my stuff is scattered. Like I was literally working 12 hours before this <laughs> and didn't know where I put anything. Um, so I think I rallied pretty quick, got my stuff together, got going. We good. Took off and we had just a nice headwind flight to uh, Ridgecrest. <laughs> <laughs> Can you help me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where we're gonna land here. All right, let's move it. Uh, other people, this guy died over here. This lady is dying, and then ours is at the end in the cul de sac, and then you go up the road there right at the cul de sac. Oh, sweet, all right. We still have headwind, but if we made it across, it would eventually get there. What the contemplation is, is do we hang out here for the night and try to fly this in the morning and maybe make it, or do we push ahead? to Indian Wells and catch that tail in, or do we drive it? Yeah, drive Indian think, Wells. I think, I think it's better because, well, it, it's better, yes or not, meaning we could camp somewhere right here on the side in the morning. But it'd be but, nice but to be where it's, it's, what, it's, only, it's only, what, 20, 30 Your miles? Come here real quick. Tell me is, what you think is, about is that this. 30 miles to drive? It's, in, it's in, at, in, least, at least 30 to Indian Wells right now. What if we even went to Indian Wells and went in from out here? Yeah, I think so, right? So yeah. After Isabella? Yeah, just come out yeah. here to Indian Wells. And shoot uh, what will be the wind that they <laughs> See, that's the thing is we probably won't even land there if we shoot from... Yeah. Oh, just, just keep going? Yeah, yeah, yeah keep going. You did good. Thanks. You did yeah. good. If somebody has a schedule, you have to drive. And the idea of the trip is to not drive, is to go and wait 
but you cannot wait more than 24 hours. More than 24 hours when you're on a group like that, it's difficult to wait any longer than that because people have a life, need to go back to work, and why wait four days when I could be with my family? So, so it's kind of cheating a little bit where you drive a little bit when you should not, but that's the way it is. It's a long way, but it's doable. Yeah. Um, so at Lake Isabella, though, it was not showing it being that windy at the lake. It was a good flight. It was fun. I like didn't really know it, like how the, the group was going to interact, but once we finally landed and made it to Ridgecrest, we had like a little barbecue, had some drinks, and then it, everything started flowing. <laughs> There's a lot of music and some light and a knife. <laughs> you want some potato salad? We ended up just camping on the side of the road near the airport, kind of. We had a pretty ambitious goal that morning out of the Inukern airport, and uh, that was to fly from the east to the west of the mountains using different spots along the way for our bailouts depending on weather, motor issues, all the, you know, the stuff. Adam, how do you feel about morning number three? Motivated. I feel almost more motivated than I did the other mornings. Because it's like 40 it degrees speed. warmer. <laughs> 40 it's so much work. He's still in the same coat. He hasn't taken it off yet. <laughs> Have you ever seen a guy jollier than this at 5.30 in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> Jolly old <laughs> Jesus. Jolly old Jesus. Jolly Jesus. <laughs> I don't know why more people don't follow this guy. <laughs> Our ambitious goal was Wood Lake Airport. A lot of good talk and a lot of good banter in the morning. Everyone was feeling pretty good. BB was feeling good because her motor actually did quite well the day before, so she was stoked and ready to get it on, you know. I was going second, pull up my wing, start running, give it full throttle, like about to get off the ground, and then my motor just like goes to an idle. BB went to take off and seen her shut it down, don't know what was going on, we're like, oh, that was weird, you know, and then she tried again, and then we heard over the radio that the motor, like as she went full throttle, it would die out and fade out and want to stall and stuff, so. With our goals in mind and how far we had to go and everything and you know BB was completely on board with hey we're just gonna pack my stuff up and push on in the vehicles you guys push on in the air and uh, we did. Could it be the So when I'm at mix? half throttle it's fine and then I go to full and then it dies. I really wanted to fly this freaking spot. Yeah, it's not that it's not safe. I know.
as we got higher and higher, I think we went up to, I think 9,005 or 98 or something like that. It was really good cruising altitude. We had really good tailwind, kind of cross, but pretty good tail. And the whole time we're looking north at like Sequoia National Park, the Kern River going up behind Mount Whitney and the whole runoff from that. And you can see down the east side of the Sierras into the Owens Valley and you can see the foothills of the Sierras rolling off into the smoky distance. And it literally made it look like an island of mountains, like almost, you know, unexplainably fake. With these guys there, they suck at communication. We had some pretty good communication on the radio finally. We decided to go big goal and push it all the way to Wood Lake. And in common fashion, as Mitch likes to do on that, he ran out of gas on his way to it. And uh, 12 miles out from our LZ, but we were so high. We were like 12,000 something feet up and the elevation there was like 500 or something, 600 feet. And with the paramotor, there's less things to focus on. Motor sounds right. What altitude am I at? How fast am I going? You know, am I gonna make my destination before I run out of gas? Hey. <laughs> that bone straight dry, huh? <laughs> oh man, we made it. Yes! Uh, uh, uh. Dude, you up. love running out of gas, Mitch. <laughs> and gliding in there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we hung out there for two hours until the chase vehicle caught up. We flew 111 miles in one push, topped out at like 12.6 or something like that, 12.8, and changed our landing destination four times during the flight. Mitch and Jean-Francois and Adam went like 60 miles per hour, freaking straight across, beautiful scenery. They're all bragging about it when they landed, and I'm like, yeah, sweet, I was in the car. It was awesome. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> this is when we first started trying to figure out what was wrong with my motor. Um, I was trying to explain to them, but they were all off the ground the first time, so they didn't get to hear what me, Blake, and Julie were hearing on the ground. So we pretty much put my full tank of gas motor on my back and I just was holding it wide open, letting them listen to what was going on. We thought maybe the car was clogged. We went full attack mode on her carb as soon as she got there. We busted it out. I changed uh, gaskets on it. We cleaned it did all this stuff and we put it together and it sort of ran a little better. But then we're like, well, let's check the plug. The plug looks rich. So we leaned it out and it ran better. It, you could go to full throttle and it would hold. And we're like, well, maybe it was a carb. Maybe it was a, a adjustment of mixture, but it seems solid now. So I ended up taking off with them again at from Wood Lake to go to Mariposa, which is kind of near Yosemite. So in order to make that stretch, we had to get to like 10,000 feet and then we would have had a nice tailwind, but beneath that was a headwind. So headwind queen over here. <laughs> but once we took off, like my motor was fine for like the first 20 minutes. I got up to 6,000 feet, I think. And then all of a sudden, like my motor just bogged out. Went back to the idle. Um, and I wasn't even like that far from the airport. We were, they, we were literally just trying to still climb to get that tailwind. Um, so I saw Adam and Mitch and Jean and they were like 5,000 feet above me. And then they just whew, took off. <laughs> I'm like, okay, sweet guys. My motor's having issues. I'm just going to keep flying until the thing dies pretty much. Cause I hate giving up. So I went 55 miles with my motor going <laughs> like the whole way it was pissing me off so bad i was in a huge head when i was maybe going like 15 miles per hour when they were going again like a 50 60 mile per hour flight for them we all took off and to our surprise it was absolute butter
sunset. Good days. That was fucking, that was fucking dope. I didn't have communication, by the way, with any of them. So the only way I could communicate was by um, Facebook Messenger or calling Blake. So I kind of looked at our little Life 360 app that we have so we could follow each other. And I saw where Blake was driving and where we were supposed to be going. So I just headed towards this random highway that I knew Blake was going to end up taking and called him landed or tried to land at this other golf course but i was already past it he's like oh this is great landing over here i'm like yeah but now i then i have to fly backwards i don't want to do that because my competitive self was like every mile i can get is a mile closer to our destination <laughs> um so i'm like from up above it looked like there was just landing spots everywhere but there was fence line along all of these freaking open horse properties so i end up having to land in someone's like little closed off locked gated property right next to their barn it was pretty much dark because i was too stubborn to go back because i didn't want to lose ground <laughs> i needed to get the 55 miles <laughs> okay um so we kind of ended up having to do a little rescue mission is how to schedule in advance where you're going to be with somebody else at that specific time. It will create some issues. Like for example, we wanted to be here specifically at 10 o'clock today, so that means we had to wait an extra day somewhere else. If we had had a good weather, we would have been able to fly a lot further, but we still had to wait for that specific day. So it's very hard to schedule in advance. Once again, this is like why BB was so much fun to have on the trip. She takes care of herself so good in the moment of pressure, like she knew to look up the map, see how Blake would get to where we were going, and then she purposely changed her flight pattern, or flight plan, to meet with Blake on that road to where, you know, like, we didn't have to look out for her or say, hey, maybe we should do this, or turn around and go back, like, we just were able to press on the three of us, and she was able to handle her own situation going 9,500 RPMs, going 7,500 RPMs, 9,500 RPMs, 75, like, and uh, she did that for, is it like 40 or 50 miles? 56 miles, she did that for 56 miles, just up and down like a freaking little dolphin the whole way. Yeah, from there we decided it was only best to press on to Blackhawk Paramotor Ranch, which would have been our just our next leg of the flight. We would have just been flying there, you know. So these are their new uh, trikes. Oh yeah, I saw these at Oshkosh. But we made it to Blackhawk, and that was the beginning of the three-day stint at Blackhawk of. An amazing time, uh, a lot of good flying in the mornings and even some at night, a lot of good times at the bonfire. My face hurt. We laughed so much the first day we were there. <laughs> you might not like baby, put it baby, together. Tell me, tell me it's your Oshkosh story of the, red, of the Red Bull helicopter and JT trip. Oh my god! <laughs> tell <me the> story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Slap. I'm in the oil most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Beebe's drank about a bottle and a half of wine tonight. Oh. And she just tripped over this fucking rock right here. It was going like face first into this thing. Good morning. Hey, happy man. Oh, he's almost He's, he's almost still sleeping. <laughs> Shit. Hi. Uh, hi. Hey, <laughs> one is still sleeping. Oh, morning, she's Art. awake. I'm awake. Who is Art? Resting. Art's in the van. Oh. Yeah. Good morning, Scott. Scott. Hi, sir. <laughs> what, what do I know? I need some picture of you. How is that? Don't do that. Don't put stress Don't on it. Don't put stress on it. <laughs> there we go, Art. Just so you know, coming your way. They weren't brand new. <laughs> they were sassy.
They feel like a clown. <laughs> Three pair of underwear. Preferably <laughs> ladies. <laughs> Preferably women. <laughs> oh, those are so gross. Actually, babe, you need, or Monty, can you take this, yep. hold it up in the parking lot? I gotta have them on radio. Yep. Stay left, stay left, stay left, stay left. Go left. Oh, fuck. You're alright, just, just pile out the glider. Relax. Oh, Relax. Relax. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're okay. All right, you right, can't right, be right. tense. You, you gotta relax slow. up and just yeah. slowly keep yeah. it. Just keep Can like, now? yep, off throttle. Get off throttle completely. Start coming in low. You're doing great. You got this, baby. Right, okay, give us a break. Your hands up. There you go. Straight at us. Focus on where we're at here. Off your throttle. Okay. Get lower. Get off the throttle. You're going to come through the rotor here, so actively yeah. piloting. Nice and easy. Okay. You're doing great. That's perfect. Perfect, perfect. Straight at me. A little bit of throttle. There you go, ball in the end. Keep it here. That was rough. It was a little rough. Actually, it wasn't too bad. The air was pretty good, actually. It was just strong. So we are quartering the wind. Yeah. We were only doing like 17, 18 miles an hour all the way here. And then finally, we got a little downwind leg. We're doing about 30. It's dropped in here. It's pretty damn windy. You know? So climbing out at Blackhawk was turbulent. Was it? And then getting back down into here was turbulent. That's probably the hardest 20 mile flight we'll do on this whole trip. I about. We planned and was totally successful at flying to Iron. Iron Stone, Iron Stone Winery, and landing there for uh, a great promotional thing for Taste Wine Guides. Being affiliated with these people already, they're like, hey, let's do this cool event and land. You guys should land at this big ass winery and it has this awesome spot and we can have lunch and do all this. And uh, Art was a big part in setting that up, so he really wanted to do it but it was some of the most challenging conditions of the flight besides what me and Mitch experienced outside of Mammoth. It was super strong headwind on a cross and we needed to 
go from where we were to the southeast, so actually backtracking and using the wind, so we kind of like crabbed the whole way, and then when we got there and had to land, it was in a hole, and everything was rotor going into our LZ, but giving the scenario and how big the LZ actually was, um, yeah, I put it in there first. I came in and tested the waters, and seeing it was doable, and everyone else kind of committed, came in. Mitch came in second. Uh, Jean came in third. Art came in fourth, and that was pretty exciting. And uh, then BB came in last. And uh, that was really exciting for her. Um, thank God we had all the years of Mitch, his experience of dealing with uh, students being an instructor and knowing how to stay calm and keep them calm he was able to literally get on the phone with bb and talk to her through her cena and keep her calm and talk her through how to stay engaged with the glider and how to you know don't let it get in front of you and just be relaxed and breathe and fly you know he he played a huge part mitch basically was the only reason bb came in with dry pants as i started coming in it was just like totally tossing me all around. You had to like be, like really try to actively pilot and make sure that you weren't doing, giving too much on either side, whatever. Um, I kind of just let the wing do its thing, rode it in. Um, I had this left-handed throttle, which was like the opposite of what I normally fly. I normally fly with a right. I normally use my bottom fingers. This was a left with a really interesting different throttle that I could barely reach the throttle. So whenever I went to let off, I actually like dropped mega, like just a total sink, almost hit a gate. <laughs> and Mitch is like, throttle, throttle. And I'm like, can't reach it. So I reach my pinky out, just like grab the throttle last minute, <laughs> go and then land. <laughs> it was pretty epic. <laughs> But after that, we decided due to the headwind once again and where we were and what we had going on, we needed to pack up the bus and uh, press on and head to, uh, head to Lincoln. Then from Lincoln, um, BB flew uh, Art's motor and uh, you know, we knew headwind was in our, in our future we didn't know how far we'd go oh we also had flight restrictions we had to be aware of at beale uh, air force base luckily we could skim under it because it was at a certain height up to a certain altitude you know and so we kind of skimmed under it so today we're at lincoln airport we're going to move out of here north trying to get to paradise the trick with this one is we got tfrs in place the uh, military airport just to our north, so it's going to come in. Give us a long route to paradise. Here she is on this Moster 185, 
front mount reserve that's as big as her almost, you know, just all this gear that she's not used to. And she tripped and fell and skidded across the tarmac and you know, had a little bit of a prop strike and a, and a GoPro strike and got up and like thumbs up and smiled. I don't know, I had like a little gust just kind of lift me and then I couldn't kill the motor. Crash landed. The drama never ends. So you that's your prop, right there. If I could have killed that damn motor, yeah, it wouldn't, have, hit, get it wouldn't it. have done that mark. That one that mark right there. Yeah. Whenever, because it wasn't shutting off. So this would be like a full-on FA investigation. So what happened here, George? <laughs> <laughs> so she kind of like comes in to land. She has a really good flare, but something, whatever it is, a little dusty or some sort of air movement, literally got her feet like two feet up higher off the ground and she kind of crabbed to the side and not having her normal outfit on, like her small harness, her motor, like everything was just different to her. So when she landed, she lost her footing and ended up smashing onto her face on the tarmac there. And uh, that was the beginning of it. I just skid a little and one tiny prop, Nick. I never freaking broke a prop in my life. And it's not even broken. It's literally like zzz, shaved. If I could have killed the motor two seconds before, it would have been fine. The flight we missed out on there would have been really cool. Like flying from Paradise up to Chester at Lake Almanor, that would have been probably one of the highlighted ones too because the canyons and the mountains and Everything were just wonderful, and plus we were really looking forward to seeing Paradise and how much that place had changed after the massive fire. But once again, you know, just couldn't stop laughing the whole trip. Like, just having so much damn fun with each other. <laughs> it is Israeli. Straight from the Holy Land. <laughs> But yeah, then we got up to Chester, California, which kind of surprised all of us. It's really, uh, you can tell it's kind of a suffering community, like a lot of boarded up doors and businesses for rent signs on them. And then we went to the airport, drove around, then went out to the lake. And that was really something, being on the lake shore of Lake Almanor and seeing the trees and looking at the line we're about to embark on and uh, just getting, you know, some good quality, you know, group time out there. Strolling around the Sierras. <laughs> and like enjoying where we were and what we were doing and reflecting on the trip and knowing it was almost over, but we had these two more flights ahead of us. And uh, that was a pretty, a pretty good night. Um, we were all feeling really good, it seemed like. BB2, even though she was struggling kind of with herself, and um, she still seemed in really good spirits, which never changed. We are heading to Sierra Bill Hot Springs today, about 75 mile flight. With any luck, we'll all get there. It was freaking <laughs> freezing butt last night. Probably <laughs> second or third coldest night of the trip. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't good at all. But uh, a little bit frosty. Got a nice tailwind today. We should be able to make some ground. So we'll see how it goes. The weather looks good. Winds aloft, they're in our favor. 
calm, it's beautiful. It's a sweet way to take the home stretch back, that's for sure. motor died on her when she was descending she we we're just getting going we literally just turned towards target and we had a long lake crossing and we were only a couple hundred feet up and we just kind of dropped in some altitude to fly the tarmac and under the tree line she came down her motor died and she landed blake called out on radio hey bb just went down guys she's on the side of the tarmac so i instantly rip toggle and rip 180 because the only thing i can think about is you know, she just, we're downwind right now, and she just went into the bushes. Like, she could definitely be seriously hurt, and we need to get back there. And, uh, but then my, my attitude totally changed when she stood up and said that she was fine. I called her out on the radio and asked her, I was like, Bibi, are you okay? Like, what's your scenario, you know? And she said, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm just, the motor died, I'm in the bushes and stuff. And uh, we had kind of been operating on this understanding that when there's major motor issues or multiple failed attempts, like we can't just land and scrap the whole flight. So I instantly tell Mitch like, hey dude, like Blake, get over here to help BB out and Mitch, let's turn and burn and knock this leg out, you know, and sorry BB, but we'll figure out what's going on with the motor when we get to the next spot. And, uh, I definitely didn't feel good saying that, but I was pretty ambitious. I definitely wanted to knock out the legs from Lake Almanor to Tahoe. That was a pretty important part of the journey for me. We took off and I dumped trims. We started flying that way. And I was just like, man, this isn't right. I, I don't think I can do this. I can't feel good about this awesome flight if I get to do it under these circumstances without at least trying. Or we can land real quick and get her in the air. I'm down with that. I'm going to pull around and land and help her out, dude. Let's go grab your wing. You got to fly this leg with us, so. Go get in your shit. Go get in your harness. Okay. I got did this. You, did you just see idle? No, but just keep your, don't, just, just don't. yeah, keep wrapping it. Okay. In my head, there's a motor issue, so I'm like, instantly like, what? We're going to go back and land, and then BB says over the radio, in between snotting sniffles of crying, thanks, Mitch. Oh, I was destroyed. I was like, all right, never mind, let's go back and... You know help BB and hopefully it's not a motor thing you know and hopefully there's something else going on because if not like I don't know why we're landing they came back they gave me a second chance which I was super stoked about but I was also stressed because they came back for me it adds pressure at this point like there was so much going on that I definitely messed up we might miss our flight but we'll get as far as we can well if you want to go it's fine we do, but we're not gonna. This is a team thing. If it's a solo mission, psh, be gone. It's not though. Here comes Blake, so we're in good shape. We just already had things set in motion and we've talked about this. Like, if this was Art or me or anyone else on the ground, I feel like there'd be people flying. And so that's the part that I'm bothered by is like, it sucks. We all have the possibility to suck on this yep. mission. And we have to accept that other people are going to do that. It's kind of like summiting a big mountain. You don't just get to turn around and fucking pull your friend up the mountain. That doesn't. No, that certainly doesn't work. Well, I'll 
I'll get one more shot if I can't make it then you guys. Absolutely. No, nope, we're already here now. We're gonna do it, but we're here, we're laid out. She was fine, good to go. She jumped up and you know, we laid her out and set her up and away she went. She took off and man. There's another face plant skidding down the tarmac off into the bushes head first. She got dished one more strong serving of shit sandwich. She hammered throttle and I watched her just face plant into the tarmac and skid with her face, her shoulder and the paramotor all on the ground, feet up in the air, wing up in the air and skidding on her face just like that. And I knew that that was just gonna be the end of it for her. And that was like actually really devastating. <laughs> like, it was a second to last flight. Really wanted to be up there. I was just in the air. Like I was ready to go. Motor died, I had to restart. I don't know, it was, it was rough. So Mitch and Adam came, gave me hugs and they took off. Here, Bill. Made it. The flight was epic. <laughs> it was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Another 65 mile an hour, buttery smooth. Me and Mitch seen Tahoe. That's literally a hop, skip, and a flight away. It's not that far. Nope. So we're going to get you in there. You're going to do the glory flight to Tahoe. And you're gonna be psyched on it because yeah. it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's a, not gonna take much for that 125 climb up. Just let's get the CTH or CHT or whatever hooked up. Yeah, let's so get your you handle hooked on it. it. You wanna do that? I it's have up. to say I'm nervous for you because things are stacking up and it's just like tink, 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 one after another. So you really need to think. I'm normally so fucking good under pressure. Like this is like where I peak. I don't attribute it so much as to you, as to trying to do a, a lot so soon, and all these different motors. There's been nothing that's common in your in your flying area except your wing. You know, s most of the time everything goes so good, but like this trip was just 
an ass kicker for me. Like I, I don't know. I had a rough go. I don't want to think about it. I'm going to cry. I put so much freaking effort into this, you know? Day nine. I caught, I caught the bug. Yeah. <laughs> rough night of sleep, but uh, we're on the home page right here. So it's the last moments of our trip. Big, one big flight back to Tahoe. Fingers crossed we all make it safe. And kiss the tarmac. <laughs> Go on with our busy lives. No. <laughs> I mean, hopefully I'll get to the tarmac. <laughs> you'll, you'll make tarmac today. <laughs> uh, I feel good. It feels kind of like we've been on the road for a minute. That's for sure. But at least we have really good weather and really good tailwind for this. And BB seems like she's going to make it. We're sending you off early, so that's kind of putting the pressure on, which is kind of cool. Well, and now, uh, we got one hell of a crew. Yeah, we got one hell of a crew, one hell of a cruise. Feel good. It's gonna be sweet. Lay it on me, I'm listening. I got a good ear, come give it a bend. I can listen all day till you tell it to me. If I heard it before, then let me hear it again. While you let it out, I can take it in. When you got something to say, you can tell it to me. Say what you wanna. Best you can with what you got. Oh, hi. Oh, nice clear lens. Off and on the whole time. No idea what was going on. Chased some coyotes. Had some birds flying with us. So that'd been an hour flight. It wasn't bad. Still fun to fly around. But certainly couldn't make the Tahoe. 9,000 feet. There's a 20 mile an hour headwind. I was literally parked. I like what Adam is right now. Fairly parked. Anyway, hell of a trip. Like I say, I'll do it again in a second. Thanks, Adam. It's been a man, dude. Really appreciate you. Mm. Mm. East one there. Well, we're still here. Didn't make it far. Didn't make it very far. High winds, flying backwards at like nine, ten thousand 10,000 feet. <coughs> BB couldn't climb. It was just sitting there. Oh, I don't think she's gonna fucking get yeah. to climb out of here. Run out of gas probably before she made it yeah. up to the right elevation. Yeah, I think to get the cruise. Oh. Well now guys? Wing bags. Wing bags. Get packed pack. up in the van. It was a hell of a trip. This is yeah. it though. It was yeah, cool. Buddy. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy. Would have been great to find a Tahoe, but such is life. Yep. All right, guys, let's do this. Let's 
get the gas off, get the shit out that we need to get out. Yeah, we, we got some, we got some work up. to do. First of all, I love you guys. <laughs> I love you too, brother. Love you too, that was cool. really good time, man. That really was cool. Good time. We almost yeah. got it. I know. We got it, dude. We got it. We almost got Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> I got Tahoe. That's all my so you problems. <laughs> Y'all have this on me today. The trucky rivers. <laughs> 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 I know it. Thank Luckily, you, it was with you guys because we'll I did not have the best sure flying script. But, but I had a lot of fun. You were so right? fun. You were so fun. <laughs> I really did. Oh. Oh. You guys. Oh. 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 We were at 10,000 feet and flying backwards. And so we knew somewhere up around 14 it was going the right direction but who really knew how high that was and also who really knew if we were going to be able to get through that layer if you could imagine wind coming from the south uh, so strong that we're flying backwards but yet there's a prediction of wind so strong we'll be doing 60 above that going the exact opposite direction that layer I, who knows what it would have actually been like. It could have been impossible to penetrate. So, uh, so yeah, I had to make the tough call. And it was tough in the moment, but as I said it, and as it left my mouth over the radio, I was super relieved. I was really, I felt light. I actually even felt like the trip was over in that moment, but in a good way. Like, not like, oh, it's ruined, you know? It was like, no, this is, this is, the conclusion like there is no opportunity to fly this last leg from this there's bad weather uh, there is no opportunity for bb to press on with what we have for equipment or what she has going on so this is the conclusion of it and let's you know make it make it fun with all these freaking issues and everything like it didn't change how much fun i had like the best group of people ever like Oh, I love these guys. We had so much fun. I feel like I've known them my whole life. Um, we freaking laughed our asses off for like nine days straight. Like it was a, like just the best time ever. Like we were just roasting each other and laughing and drinking and having fun and laughing about all of our mistakes that we were making and all the issues that we kept running into. We just like the vibe with everyone was so good. Like I would do it again, easily. Hopefully fly the whole thing next time. <laughs>